So how are you doing tonight? Come on, I want to hear more excitement than that. How are you doing tonight? Super. Come on. Super. All right, you're really getting with it. That's great. I somebody in the parking lot. I said, "How are you doing?" He said, "Good." And I said, "That's not the right answer." <laughs> I like to have fun, don't you? Amen. I'm excited about the Lord and excited about what He's done for us. And I'm, I maybe I'll tell a few stories tonight, okay? Before I get started preaching. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for the goodies we had, the goodie bag we had in the motel and the motel room and everything. We appreciate that so much and appreciate your love and. We just, uh, we just, it's like going on a special date, you know, I took my honey with me today. Oh my, what a wonderful thing. Amen. But anyway, uh, when I was young, and I was young once, I probably can't believe that, but uh thing is that when I was, when I was young, I was, I, I was going to, I said to the pastor, I'm going to tell him a story about children obey your parents. You know, it's a good thing to obey your parents, Right. One of my favorite places to go when I was young was to go to the zoo in Racine, Wisconsin. It was on the other side of the town, and I walked. We walked. We did something un-American. We walked, you know, and uh, we didn't have uh, we didn't have any um, television, television, I should say, and we didn't we didn't have cell phones, and so we thought of a lot of things that we could do without all that stuff, you know. And uh, our, our kids in our, in our block in our neighborhood there, we'd always meet together in the morning. And then we decide what we're going to do for the day. You know, it's good for kids to decide what they're going to do. You know, so um, we would get we would get together and uh, plan all kinds of things. I told them one thing. I'm going to tell them another. But when when I was uh, I don't know how old I was, maybe 12 years old, uh, a bunch of us kids were standing there by a house and had a floor, second floor. And I said, you know, they said, that, that, that porch is too high to jump off of. And I said, oh, that's not that high. I could easily jump off of that. And, uh, you know, I thought of Superman, you know, but I couldn't fly very well. But anyway, I got up on the porch and I jumped and I came down head first instead of feet first. And the ground went me very quickly. And uh, I put my arms out like this and I broke my left arm. Well, this kid was standing there. You know, a bunch of them was there. And one kid in particular had a chocolate ice cream cone in his hand and made me mad, and he was laughing at me because I was crying. I broke my arm, you know. So I went after him, and I swung at him with my right hand, and I hit that ice cream cone, and it flew in the air. And this little black dog that follows us all the time, called Pal, he followed that ice cream cone all the way in the air, and he just sucked it up, you know. And, and I can still see that. I thought that was really neat. But anyway, this kid, so I hit him and knocked him on the ground, and I got on top of him, and I just... And he was crying because I was beating him up, and I was crying, and I jumped up. And I said, anybody else got anything to say? Say it. Nah, nah, nah. I just, I used to have a temper, <clears throat> but I don't have any more. Uh, but anyway, then I went home, and I didn't say anything. And for a week, I didn't say anything about it. I, I, but the problem was sleeping at night. You know, when you got a broken arm and you roll on it, it kind of hurts, you know. And it woke me up and woke me up. And finally I said to my mother, a week later, I said, Mom, I think I broke my arm. She said, broke your arm when? I said, last week. She said, I what? And I said, I jumped off the porch, you know, in the house at the other end of the block, the second house. Going. She said, oh, that's only two steps high. I said, I'm not talking about the front porch. I'm talking about the one on the second floor. What? Why did you jump off of that? I said, well, <laughs> and, uh, So he took me to the doctor, and he, he gave me a steel uh, cast and wrapped it all up, you know, and then I walked around and said, now try to mess with me. <laughs> that was one of the things. But when I was... Younger than that, I went to the zoo with my mother, and I was probably five, six years old, I don't know. And uh, we were by a, a monkey cage, and it was circular, and they had sections in there where they had different monkeys in there. So I got the right idea to get some uh, lilac leaf bush, uh, leaves from the bushes, you know, and I went and I had a stick, and I was sticking them in there. And they are eating them, and so I went and got some more. And one of the branches I had, it fell over the railing between the cage and the railing. And uh, there was a monkey in there who had real long arms and big fangs like this. And another little short one went there in the cage together. They're buddies, you know. And so I went to climb over the railing to get that leaves, those leaves, and I'd give it to the monkey. And my mother said, don't do that. that. You'll get hurt. And so she went around the cage the other side. She couldn't see me, so I quickly got over the railing, bent down, got a hold of this branch, and the monkey got a hold of me. He got a hold of my head. And you have them by the hair, and you're going boom, boom, boom against the bars. And I started yelling, ah! 
My mother comes running, what's happening? Oh, my goodness. So she's pulling one way, and the monkey is pulling the other way. And uh, finally got me up against the bars, and he bit me behind my neck. And I was screaming my head off, and she finally got out of there, and he... And, uh, and I, and, uh, so that's just a story. Be, you know, obey your parents, okay? And it, it works out better that way. <laughs> and I could go on and on with stories. I had a lot of things that I did when I was young. And, uh, I always added things to the, to my life, you know, that made it very, very exciting, okay? <clears throat> so, anyway, now that I'm old and I'm quiet and, and, uh, settled down and, you know, we've been married 58 years. And we never had a fight. You believe that? We never had a fight. How many believe that? Nobody. <laughs> what? I'm disgusted with it. We had a few loud discussions here and there, but we never had a fight. You know, you have to talk things over. <laughs> hey, my honey's a survivor. <laughs> all these years so I'm going to go back to Psalm chapter 1 I'm just going to read those verses over and just uh, say a few comments that I said this morning because some people weren't here and uh, trees don't run trees don't run trees don't run amen, amen. and uh, we need to keep that in mind blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the way of the scornful doesn't walk with him he doesn't get the counsel of the ungodly he doesn't stand with them, and he doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful. You know, it's amazing, even in Christian circles, that uh, as kids grow up, some we've had, boy, Christian schools, that that is the answer, and that Christian schools are not the answer. Oh, we have a lot of times kids in Christian school get all kinds of harassment from other kids from Christian homes. You know, it's the home that makes the difference. It's the home. Uh, when the church stands for one thing, and they send their kids to the, the church and think that they're going to change that heart, and, and there's not that consistency at home, it doesn't work. That's right. And I found that if, if, uh, if you're really a good homeschooler and you really spend time with your kids and you make it a total uh, program, uh, that's the best way they identify with you. The missionaries that we have in Honduras right now, they raise their kids in homeschool. Two teenage boys, they're excited about being there. Amen? A little nine-year-old girl. Uh, and bro, I'll tell you, they don't have any of the luxuries that we have. Amen. They have a, they have a truck, but <laughs> you go down their roads. It's like, a, I, I, I hurt my back before I went to the, uh, the to, uh, Honduras. I started to say Philippines, Honduras. And, uh, I couldn't even tie my shoes. I couldn't bend over. My wife said, you're going to go to Honduras. I said, yeah, I'm going to go there because it's going to get better. <laughs> I hoped it was going to get better. And, uh, and when I got there, we're on these roads, man. It was like a hiero, a hundred chiropractic treatments as I went over the road. <laughs> and, uh, it really adjusted my back real good, okay? And, uh, so I had a good time over there, and I'm thankful that I went, okay? I did get better, by the way. I did get better. I, I sat in a plastic chair over there and put my feet up on the bed and said, it's just like home, and then the chair collapsed, and I busted the thing, went in every direction, okay? So anyway. But he says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord or the word of God, okay? Okay, in his law, he does meditate day and night. Folks, again, I told people over and over again, if we listen to the word of God and we don't do anything with it, guess what happens to us? We're fighting the Holy Spirit of God and our hearts are getting harder. You understand that? Yep. Pharaoh didn't listen. His heart got harder and harder and harder. And it's unbelievable how hard, how hard he got. And the thing is about taking the word of God. You say, well, I have trouble with my thought life. I have trouble with this. I have men come to me, I, you know, I have a lust problem. This Take the word of God and memorize it. And renew your mind. Just keep getting verses and verses. Keep your mind busy in the things of God. Meditate on it day and night. It, it really helps you. Amen? Amen? And thou shalt be like a tree planted by rivers of water, bringing forth his fruit in his season. And his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I said this this morning. Tree planted by the rivers of water. God's word is full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, don't quench the Holy Spirit of God and let, let him work. And, uh, and, uh, and you know what? Trees are stable. Trees are strong. Trees are powerful. And in the word of God, trees are an example of power. I talked about Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom this morning and how that God showed Nebuchadnezzar that there's a greater power than his kingdom. 
And I didn't get into some other things there, but the thing is about it, and then he devastated him. And, and, and uh, Nebuchadnezzar no, uh, uh, took note of, of Daniel's God. Amen? Whether they got saved or not, I don't know, but he sure, he said, there's no other God. You know, and he, he was excited about that. And what they do shall prosper. Now again, when Daniel, when Daniel went there, he purposed in his heart not to defile himself. Now listen to this. Here was a young man. He was a eunuch. He couldn't have a family. He lost his family at home. He lost his country. He was a slave. He was under the, the wicked, a wicked, wicked king of a wicked, wicked kingdom. But he purposed in his heart not to defile himself. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decided that they were going to stand and they stood together for the Lord. Now God sent four trees. Amen? Amen. I mean, I'm telling you, and nothing was going to make them change. And, and uh, they were saturated with the word of God and things of Christ and their purpose in the Lord. And, and they said, man, I'd like to, man, I would be great to go in the lion's den and just sleep on the lion's, you know, you, to use the lion's mane and just cuddle up in there and sleep all night, you know. And, uh, and yeah, but first of all, purpose in your heart, you'll be surprised what God will do. Amen? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, well, I'd like to be thrown in a fiery furnace and just walk around with the Lord and not even smell like smoke. Well, purpose in your heart to walk with God. Amen? And so he gives us the strength. So there, were, there are four trees, four, four powerful people walking with God. And it's exciting. And then I mentioned that, you know, in, in, in Genesis, it speaks about the tree of good and evil. Let's go to Genesis. And I'll start there. Genesis two sixteen and 17. As I continue this. Somebody said they watched the, the message that I preached at the Manly Perry's church. And I said, we're well, going to hear the same thing tonight. <laughs> uh, this, this message, is, I believe, has helped a lot of people. Amen. And it's something that God just gave to me. I wasn't thinking about it. I was, th- I was listening to the message. I said my son was preaching. And all of a sudden, came in my mind, trees don't run. And I kind of like, what? <laughs> trees don't run. And so I started looking at all of it. I said, whoa, I got excited about it. Amen. When God puts something on your heart, it's great. I didn't get this from a commentary. I didn't get it from anything else. I'm just the Lord. Okay? And I'm not against you getting something from a commentary. Make sure you search everything out. Some of these commentaries, I, anyway, I but anyway, I've had some things where I look at, I, 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 well, I won't get into all that. I'll get into another message and then I won't get this one done. Okay. But uh, in Genesis 2, 16, and the Lord commanded man saying of every tree of the garden, thou may eat freely, freely eat rather, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day thou eatest of, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make, give him a helpmate for him. And now listen. God made man and woman. He made us to complement each other. I was amazed when I first got married. My wife didn't think like me at all. She didn't like boxing. She didn't like wrestling. She didn't like weightlifting. She didn't like any of that stuff. And how in the world can you live without it? Amen. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and she liked to cook, and I thought that was a good thing. Amen. She was uh, she's a good cook, and I could tell you some first things that she tried. But anyway, uh, the 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 uh, it's amazing. But God made us to complement each other, and I learned I started to learn something when I got married. I got married. We get we did the the man that married us was a Lutheran preacher in Minnesota. Her parents' church. <laughs> we went there. And, and he got a lot of counsel. We got a lot of counsel. Have a good marriage. And I thought, well, of course. So we love each other. And, <laughs> and uh, my mother said, watch out for him. He's got a temper. And we were married like six months or so. And, and uh, my wife said to, I mean, my, yeah, my wife said to my mother, he, I haven't, he hasn't even raised his voice. Man, we're doing great. And one day we were going to church. And we lived in Milwaukee, and we were going to Racine. And I was driving, and my wife says, why didn't you go that way? You know, women, I'll help you out. And I said, well, I just decided to go this way. 
And she says, well, if you would have went that other way, it would have. And I said, honey, I just decided to go this way. And then she said the third time, yeah, if you would have. And I said, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I'll drive where I want to drive. <laughs> and, 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 and she started to cry. And I thought, oh, what did I do? <laughs> and I was driving. I didn't say another word. I just started to look. Oh, no. <laughs> so my little sweetie, uh, she's lived with me. And uh, I don't do that now, you know, right now. She, she carries a cane. I mean, I don't want to raise my voice now. <laughs> but, you know, that's how we are. And I know what that has to do with Genesis. I don't know. I just, uh, you know, I go off on these tangents. But the thing is what God told them and warned them and said, don't touch. Don't eat that. Don't eat from that tree. He gave them a choice. He gave us a choice. Nobody's going to hell unless they choose not to go to heaven. Some people just plead with them. Why don't you trust Jesus? And I don't care what the Bible says. I don't care. Get away from them. And, and, and you can't do anything about it. You pray for them. By the grace of God, we are the best example we can for those dear folks. We want them to go to heaven. I told you this morning, my wife's mother got saved. And I was so excited about that. It was a, such a blessing. Transformed her life. Amen. But as they went on here, notice the thing about this. Our old nature. When, when God questioned Eve, she said, what did she say? Oh, I made this choice. What did she say? She went into B.O., blame others. Amen? She said, the serpent, he's the one. Yeah. So then God examined Adam, and he, he went to B.O. He said, uh, she, yeah. she said it was good. And you gave her to me, God. Mm-hmm. Whoa, yeah. that's kind of tough. All right, you're going to get in real trouble. And so they got into all kinds of trouble with this. And I just want to say this, you know, uh, they, and somebody said to me, well, Adam and Eve were holy. I said, they weren't holy, they are innocent. There's a difference. Jesus could not sin. Somebody told me that Jesus could have sinned. And, and of course, the, the Jehovah's Sicknesses say that too. <laughs> I just thought I'd bring that up. But anyway, the <laughs> and uh, I preached there today. I was, uh, did you like the message? <laughs> but, but anyway, so... As we go on, these babies are innocent. And you say, well, when are, everybody asks me, what's the age of accountability? Well, when they were in the wilderness, he said, you know, who could go into the promised land? What age? 20 and younger, right? All of those. So uh, that to me tells me that when you get over 20, you're an adult. Okay? So the thing is about this is that, but... Uh, we don't know. It's, it's a different age for everybody. Uh, there's a there's a, a boy in our church. He's a mongoloid. You know what that is? Mongoloid. You don't know what that is. They all have kind of the same features, uh, um, and uh, a lot of time you see one, you see another. It's just almost they're almost the same features. Uh, I don't know how else to explain it, but anyway, he, he's he's limited, and. Uh, I don't know how old he would have to be to be accountable or if he would be accountable. I see him, I, his name is Alex. I said, Alex, how's my, Alex, how's my buddy? And I hug him and he said, oh, are you my best buddy? And he said, yes, oh, we're, buddy, we're buddies, you know. And, and uh, but you know, some people uh, probably go through life and never accountable. They can't, they can't function. And uh, so it's different. But when we know right and wrong and we know we're rejecting the gospel, rejecting the Lord, Okay, we're in real trouble. And I want to say this to you. Satan, Satan's uh, deals are always have poison. Always have poison. I've seen so many th- things where people said, oh, I thought, I said, you, you didn't think according to the word of God. And, and it, it, the devil's just got all kinds of poison. Uh, when I did my grandson's uh, funeral, uh, 19 years old, I said, you know what? I was walking in the driveway one day and I saw a grasshopper jump and land in a bush. And within just a few seconds, a spider came out much smaller than that grasshopper and just started to wind him up. And at first the grasshopper could have gotten loose, but it was so fast, he just kept winding, winding, winding until it had him totally wound up. I said, that's what the devil does to us. Get in a place where we can't escape, but God can bring us loose. I said, if I was God, I could have taken that, that grasshopper out of there and... I didn't let him loose. I just let him be. <laughs> and not as compassionate as the, as the Lord. 
He didn't, in fact, he didn't ask me to save him. But, <laughs> but I said, the thing about that is that, my goodness, that's what the devil does to us. We start toying with the devil. And we start making excuses for our sin, excuses. God gives us the power so that that doesn't have to dominate us. Amen? I know we have a sin nature. I've got one. And, uh, and the thing is about this, so we've always got to be careful because that stuff can, uh, when, when people get into drugs, I mean, I've just had, my, my stepfather drank heavily, beat up my mother, took the money. We didn't have nothing after my father died. Now look, but he used to cry and say, I, I, I'm going to quit and go right back to it. He did that for a year after year after year. He drank the, the blackest coffee, boiled it all day long, and he, and he chewed snuff and he drank alcohol and had a rough job and, and uh, greasiest food on the face of the earth and ate all that stuff and he lived till 81. And he got saved at 78 years of age. Three good years. He asked me if I'd do his funeral. Man, what a blessing. Amen. To see what God can do. But we can't break loose of that stuff. We got to stay in the word of God. And they got themselves into a real trap. They said, the day eat of that, you shall surely die. I had people say, well, they didn't die. They sure did. Death isn't going out of existence. Death is, death is separation. Yep. They were separated from God. And when we die, for, leave this old body, we'll be separated from this body. And uh, the way my body is going, getting all creaks and all those kind of things, I won't mind anyway. <laughs> and, uh, but God's not willing that any should perish. Thank God for that. Thank God that he shed his blood for us. Thank God he, he wants us to go to heaven in spite of us. Amen? Not because of us. And I'm going to say this also. When we go on in the Lord, sometimes... Christians start to get a little uppity up. Well, I'm not like that person. But I said this morning, there's kids out there, they're so messed up. They're so messed up. They don't need us to look down on them. They don't need us to come along and say, you know, look at, a, look at that. Uh, uh, look at that person over there. Boy, like this guy was praying and he, I tithe and I do this and I do that. And look at this guy over here. I'm glad I'm not like he is. I'm sure glad I'm not like he is. I'll tell you. I was, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, uh, I was over there, and he made, he made a statement when I was over that Jehovah's Witnesses, whatever they call that hall. But anyway, and I said, well, I, others have been offended by truth, too. <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is about this man, don't get proud. God hates that pride. Good night. Uh, people get educated in this stupidity, and they're proud of it. Well, I'm, I'm an honor student. I did this and I did that and everything else. Uh, well, I'm a school dropout, okay? I'll just say that. <laughs> but, <laughs> and I'm proud of it. <laughs> but listen, people are, you know, it's amazing what people get proud about. Yeah. And, and people have different kinds of abilities and talents that God gave them. Good night. There's people out there that are working hard and they've got real good talent. Hey, uh, how would you like to have a book learning so-called scholar when your car breaks down and go to him for help? Mm-hmm. Or would you rather go to a mechanic that knows what he's doing? Yep. You know, it's just amazing how people be well, I'm, I'm a scholar. I, I went to Harvard. And, you know, and they come out and they're dumber than a rock. Okay? <laughs> so anyway, I don't know what to put me on that. But we've got to be careful of pride. Be careful of pride. It's a horrible thing. Amen? Amen. And uh, so the thing is about this, God in the Word of God mentions and talks about the tree of life. Amen? He says it should be guarded. Tree of life. Then all of a sudden it, it, it just disappears from off the, you know, off the map, so to speak. Uh, uh, and I said you could go where, they were, where God started life and you could go to that place and you could search and search and you won't find the tree of life. You just won't find it. You say, well, yeah, but they're guarding. No, it's not even there. Hello? God transplanted it. Amen? God transplanted it, and, and it's super exciting because as he, tra- he transplanted that tree, and, and it comes up again in, in uh, the book of Revelation. Amen? Amen. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, the first place. It doesn't come up again till Revelation. And I want to say something. The Lord came out, what? The Lord, it says, grew up in uh, Isaiah 53, the first verse, it says, He rose up out of dry ground, a tender plant out of dry ground. But He's a powerful tree, right? 
dry ground. He came at a time when, when uh, Israel was starving spiritually and uh, dry spiritually. And he didn't need water because he is the water. <laughs> and and, and uh, so he, he grew up and, and shed his blood for us. And, and it's powerful, powerful. Can you imagine what he went through and put up all the stuff he went, he went through and, and then said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. My goodness, people are doing all kinds of things. We ought to say the same thing. Just forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And uh, I always keep praying, give me the love of Calvary. Give me the love of Calvary. Give me the love of Calvary, God. I know I can't get that much love, but I could, you know, as God fills my heart, we can get that. Amen? To a degree. But there's too much old nature in us until we get to heaven. But Revelation 2, 7. Let's look at that just for a moment. And I think this is super, super exciting. Let me just get to it, though. I'm turning too many pages. I go from one, the one book and then I pass Revelation. And that's what happens when you get old, you know. 2, 7. He hath the ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Amen. He that overcometh shall eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. How am I, <laughs> I don't want to bring up a controversy, but when that, when, when that thief died on a cross, where did he say, today you'll be with me where? Paradise. paradise. I've heard things were paradises, but I think he, God is talking, I don't think, well anyway, paradise, heaven. Amen. <laughs> People say there's some compartments in, yeah. in the lower parts of the earth and divided. And, and one part is hell and one part's the paradise. And tell me that's paradise. I <laughs> get down in the ground someplace. I want to be with my Jesus. I want to be with my God. Amen. Amen. And uh, so I just thought I'd bring that up. Uh, and whatever, whatever you want to believe, you can believe. If your preacher believes something, I, don't, I know he doesn't. But anyway. The thing is about is that, you know what? And, uh, and uh, a lot of people have the problem overcome. He that overcomes. Who overcomes? Christians that walk with God. Amen? And uh, he calls us overcomers. Let, let, let's, as long as you brought up. Let's go to another book. <laughs> okay, let's go to John. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. I'm, an, I'm, I'm excited about this. John, first John chapter 4. In verse 4, you hear of God, little children, that's born ones, young in Christ, amen, and have overcome him because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You are overcome. You have overcome. The day I accepted Jesus Christ, I overcame. I became an overcomer. Come on. We're not overcomers. Good night. If it was up to us to be overcomers, we'd be lost and on our way to hell. Good night. Let's go to let's go to First John five four. It's a good book, Amen. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Overcomers. People think, well, you got to be an overcomer. Well, I am an overcomer because Jesus is my overcomer, and Jesus is in me, and Jesus is not ever going to let me go. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, right? Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Name these things. We are more than conquerors through him that loves. Not just a winner. More than conquerors. Amen. The enemy doesn't have a chance. Right. Now I lost the rest of the verses. <laughs> Overcome. <laughs> shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Amen. Nay, these things are more than conquerors in the throne. Persuade them neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's therefore now no condemnation that are in Christ Jesus. Yep. Somebody said to me, well, you can lose your salvation. I said, right. Jesus said, I give unto you everlasting life. Mm-hmm. You know what no kind of God that is? I got a billion dollars in my pocket, by the way. Billions, am I? Okay. I want to give you a billion dollars, sir. Yes. Wait a minute, I want it back. <laughs> no, I don't want any, any, any. Here, let me give you a billion dollars. Okay. Is Jesus that kind of a giver? Mm-mm. Huh? 
I give unto you eternal life. It's a gift of God. Yep. Then he comes back and takes it back. Good night. My pocket's full of billion dollars. Anybody need a billion dollars tonight? I'll just put them here. You can help yourself. Now you don't have to work anymore. Just go home and get retired. Okay. All right. But the thing is about this, that man alive, uh, it's so, it's so, you know, I, I don't want to tell him Manly Perry, but when he first came to our church, he didn't believe in eternal security. The church he went to didn't believe in eternal security. And he said, but I won't, I won't, I won't mess around with anybody else. So I preached a hundred and some reasons why we're eternally secure. All right. He says, oh, I believe in eternal security. <laughs> Bless his heart. He's a blessing. Amen. So um, we have this exciting thing about, hey, we're depending on the Lord. We say, how can we go through? How could we go through this or how could we through that? He said, even if we fail, he doesn't change. He doesn't change. There's some backslidden Christians out there. They're struggling with everyday life, but they haven't denied the Lord. They've just, they're just weak. Okay. And so they got messed up. Well, Revelation 22. Let's go to that. Now, I'm going back to Revelation now that you, you may be going to 1 John. <laughs> Revelation 22, 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street, <coughs> on either side of the river, well, there was a, a, a tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruit. And yielded her fruit every month, and, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there should be no more curse there, but the throne of God and of the Lamb of God shall be in it, and the servant shall serve him. Listen to me now. The tree of life. Huge tree. Amen? God transplanted it. Amen? It's now in heaven. You can't find it here on earth. It's in heaven. And, and, uh, and that tree, it says here, it's, it's in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river. So what is he saying? Here's the midst, and it's huge. And the river goes around it. It goes right over the river. The tree of life is, is taking in the, you know, is a picture again of this taking in the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And it's flowing in heaven, and we'll see this river. That's the only holy water I know of is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Some of you other they said, you, you, you need to sprinkle me with holy water. And I said, there isn't any. <laughs> and I said, I said, that's a, that's out of the pit of hell. That's a lie. And she said, oh, is it? I said, that's exactly right. Nobody can bla- take some water and bless it and sell it to somebody or sprinkle them and all that kind of junk. Amen. Uh, there's not, no such thing. But God has this, this, these pictures in heaven, which we'll re- constantly remember that the, the, the tree of life is a picture. Uh, of something very special. Amen? And the water is something special. Holy Spirit. Word of God. Things of God. Holy, 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 holy. And uh, we'll look at that. Look at that beautiful river. Uh, uh, I was down here. We went down and I was looking for <laughs> days in. And, but it wasn't there. I was down there by the river. It's very pretty down there. Sun was shining yesterday. Wow. It's pretty. We're by Lake, right, by Lake Michigan. Beautiful. Amen? And by the way, Rock Falls, is there a, a waterfalls around here someplace? What do they call this place? I said, honey, there must be some falls around here somewhere. I drove all over the place and they couldn't find you. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, in the midst of the street, uh, uh, on either side of this river, there was this tree of life. It bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded the fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Listen to this. Listen to that. What is the picture of this? Every month. Different kind of fruit. You have a tree that gives different kind of fruit every month? Huh. You know what? This tree, I believe with all my heart and soul, this tree of life is a picture of God's provision. A picture of how that he provided for us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Every season, whether we feel high or low, God was feeding us. Amen? Amen. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. This picture is the covenant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Promise eternal life. We get to heaven. Every time we look at that tree, we say, that's what. That reminds me of Jesus. Just like the cross reminds us of Jesus. The bloodshed. Amen? And, and as we go through life, we go through many, many seasons, right? Young age, old age, right? 
Someday I'm going to get old. I don't know what I'm doing when I get old. But uh, the thing is about this is this. There are times of joy. There's times of sorrow. There's times of real pain. Real pain. Uh, there are times with uh, there's real. Some people get totally discouraged and down, but Jesus is still there. He doesn't let us go through it alone. He's with us. And he feeds us during that time. Every season. Every season. Every month. In heaven, we're reminded of, I don't know if that's real food fruit we're going to eat. I think it is. Why not? Amen? Amen. And there's no corruption. We don't, they'll never get rotten. <laughs> Isn't that good? Amen? How do you like when you get a watermelon and leave it in the refrigerator and you go and take it and start it rot? I was really hungry for watermelon. But, I didn't. but anyway, the thing is about it, and, 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 uh, and the healing of the leaves is a picture of his provision also. Doctors don't heal us. They find things that God provided that heal us. Amen? They don't heal us. They don't give us any life. Doctors come in. Well, I do it this way. My, my wife had a, a problem, uh, intestinal problem, problem, and she was trying all the health things. And she went to this doctor. He came in, and he was going to do the operation. And he said, uh, and well, what was the deal? She, he didn't, she didn't have it. It was a year later. And she said, well, I was trying these natural things. He blew up. He got so mad. Those things don't work. I thought they were not And scared the fire out of her. Big guy. And I wanted to knock him out. But with love, I, was, I wanted to knock him out. I was, I was ready to jump him. I mean, I was, I was mad. I said, get out of here. I said, just get out of here. I took my honey to another doctor that was a human being. And... Uh, <laughs> Not a gorilla. And, uh, and uh, she was afraid to go to another doctor. I said, honey, we'll go find him. And this other doctor was so kind to her. She came out. She was so, oh. <laughs> but this guy was really rough. I mean, good night. I told some other doctors about him. And he said, and, and he, they said, they didn't condemn him. They just went, oh, yeah, I, I know him. <laughs> they wouldn't make any comment. No comment. But anyway, but God, during all those times, uh, he's, he's, he's made our bodies to heal or not to heal. And if we don't heal, praise God. Because we're going to heal as soon as we leave here. Amen. Amen. It's all in Christ Jesus. Brand new body. Brand new life. No more sorrow. No more sickness. No more crying. No more dying. Oh my goodness. What a wonderful, wonderful thing that God has provided for us. So we can go through the things here. Amen. And uh, give him the glory. Because he's the one that sustains us. I, I love this passage of scripture. And, and uh, we don't need healing in heaven. You know, we're already healed. But he told us about, and I believe this is a, a provision that God says to us. He brings us through. Um, I've had, like I said, some heartaches. Uh, and sometimes I've had, like I said, people call me every name in the book they could think of. Amen? And I, I'm talking about people that you love. I'm talking about people that are very dear to you. I said, Dead men don't complain. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and uh, uh, and I, I just had some real challenges a few days ago. Really, really tough. And, and I, just, I just said to my honey, I said, you know, I'm not all upset about that. I'm not all upset about that. I just know where it's coming from. And I know it's not true. So let's march on for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why worry about it? Amen. And he said, and, and he, I like to read this anyway. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and, and of the Lamb shall be in, in it. And, and his servants shall serve him. Man, what a great time that's going to be. And they shall see his face and his, his name shall be on their foreheads. And there shall ownership, right? And there, sh, there, there shall be no night there. They need no candle, neither light or the sun. For the Lord giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen? 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 Boy, aren't, aren't you, you know, I'm excited. Uh, there won't be any electric bill, I, no Commonwealth Edison bills, no telephone bills, no nothing. I mean, it, it, it's just amazing what God has prepared for us. We've got to keep our eyes on that. I can't understand even Christians. Boy, I know about you. I like to invest in eternity. I really do. It's exciting to me. My wife said to me, we don't have anything because you gave it all away. I didn't give it all away. There are people hurting, right? And she, she agrees with that. 
But she's, but she said that once or twice. I said, look, we're resting in eternity. Amen? Amen. There's people that are hurting. And, uh, and, and, I, and for a long time I thought it was the loan company because I didn't have money, but I had good credit. Okay? Bad thing to tell anybody you got good credit. But anyway, so I would get things for people, and it's, you know, I'll pay you back. I probably got $35,000 out there someplace. I'm not going to get it back from those folks. Uh, I won't live long enough to get it back. They intend to pay it back. I don't know where they're going to even get it from because they blew everything else too. But the thing is about that. But God's provided. I don't have a big bank account someplace. I could have made, you know what I could have, in 1975, I could have made $85 an hour. That's such low salary. I went to a dentist. I told the, I told the dentist one time, I could have made $85,000. Uh, $85, $85 an hour. Uh, take that off the tape. Uh, $85 an hour. And I said, and I said, but I became a pastor because that's too cheap. And he went, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> First church I took. Our four kids, no insurance, $10,000 a year. Okay? And that's when I could have made $85 an hour. And I said, <laughs> and, and you know what? I, do I look like I'm starving? You just saw me a few years ago and I was weightlifting and everything, 270 pounds. I wasn't starving. I had to push my weight from the table. That's all I had to do. Amen? I did that exercise. Push. So the thing is about this, you know, we, we, God has provided for us. And in heaven, he's going to do all these things, you know. We'll, we'll go to heaven and we can eat and eat and eat and eat and we'll never get fat. Isn't that great? I like that. And he said, I, and uh, where am I at now? Where did I leave off here? Okay. Ownership, and there shall be no night there, and there shall be no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God the ho- of the holy prophets sent his angel to show uh, unto his servants things which must come shortly. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. He'll come shortly. You said, that's 2,000 years ago. Yeah, two days ago for God. It's amazing how fast things go. You know what? When I tell kids that I'm 82 years old, they go, wow. We're married 58 years. 58 years. Do you know how fast that goes? You know, when you get old, you start, you say, today is September, and then you turn around and, oh, it's October. You turn around and it's November. Then you turn around again and it's December. It just goes fast. Amen? And God doesn't have, for God, that's nothing. Amen? And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and I went, and when I heard and seen, and I fell down and worshiped before the feet of the angel that showed me these things, and he, then said he unto me, See that thou do it not, for I am a fellow servant of thy brethren and the prophets and of them which uh, keep the sayings of the of this book worship God. He said unto me, Seal not the uh, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for they the time is at hand. And he he said, then he said, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that's filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. My Lord is with me to give every man according to his work. I shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and ending, the first and the last. Blessed he that do the commandments, that they may have the right to what? The tree of life. He may enter in through the gates of the city. What is he saying? We're not saved by the commandments. No, I just do what I want to do. <laughs> no, there's a new commandment. Love. Love, there's a love bond between us and the Lord. And that love bond is so much greater than anything we could do in any other way. I'm with my honey here today because I love her. Amen? I do things for her because I love her. Now, if I don't behave, though, she does use the law sometime with that cane, so I've got to be careful. But <laughs> the thing is about, hey, listen, that's the way it is with God. We do these things. We don't throw out the command. I don't go. I, 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 somebody said, can you do anything you want to and still go to heaven? I said, I sure do. I do anything. You can murder people? Yes. I commit all kinds of 
adultery and all kinds of things. Yes, I can. Yeah, I can. I can steal. I can do. I can do anything I want to. I said, but I'm doing what I want to because Jesus is in my heart. Mm-hmm. Why would I go and kill people? Yeah. Right. Why would I commit adultery? Why would I do these? If I love the Lord Jesus, why would I do those things? If somebody fails, God picks them up again. Is that right? Mm-hmm. If they call on God and confess of their sin, if we, and, and we broke that fellowship with Him, He lifts us up again. I'm talking to all kinds of people that are so broken. And I, and I believe that they've accepted the Lord, but they've been in drugs and all kinds of stuff, and that's been their life. I'm glad I didn't get addicted to drugs. But you know there's a lot of addicts in this room? You know, in America, we're food addicts. <laughs> I admit that. Man, somebody said, when I was 270 pounds, I said, I'm going to lose this weight. And he said, oh, you." Yeah. I, and then one guy told me, I paid $150 a gun to this diet, wonderful diet, and I lost this weight. And I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose this weight, and it's not going to cost me anything. I'm going to save money because I'm going to do that. Push away. Push away. People to give you this stuff, man, it's good stuff. I mean, you know, the, 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 in our, in our uh, bag that you gave us, we got the, all these Reese's Pieces. Do you like Reese's Pieces? That whole bag of them, they're all gone already. I'm sorry, I was going to share them with you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, hey. You don't have to eat the whole bag. You don't have to eat the whole bag of potato chips. You don't have to eat all that stuff. That we don't have to eat that whole cake at once. You know, you just take it easy. You know, and uh, and uh, it's not necessary. Amen. Amen. And so the thing is about it. I went from two hundred seventy pounds to two hundred and five pounds in six months after my first heart operation. <laughs> but I did it on purpose. I did it on purpose. What do I need all that luggage for? I'm an old man. I got a ticker that has to handle all that and all those kind of things. So we got all these wonderful things. And, and again, don't forget, as a church, you are called of God. As a church, as a Christian, we're to grow by that trees of living water. Amen? And we're to become strong ourselves because he makes us strong. He makes us powerful. And we're to keep on going and keep on going. And we, we can do it if we follow the Lord. It's an exciting life to live. I don't say super just because I just want to say a word. I say super because I'm going to heaven. I say super because I'm saved. God's not going to leave me. He's not going to forsake me. I I enjoy life. And there are heartaches when I go through life, but I can still look and say, hey, this is not my home. I'm just passing through. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm excited about life. I'm excited about churches like this. I'm excited about pastors like this that love the Lord. And we ought to be known for our love. Like I said this morning, we ought to be known for our faith. Amen? Amen. Jesus, what? I call my ministry, finish your course ministries. Jesus is author and finisher of our faith. He didn't say I start you out and then you try to make it yourself. How would you like to have a life saver? You're drowning in Lake Michigan. Help, help. And he takes you, you know, a little ways and he drops it. Okay, do the rest of it yourself. Hmm. Amen? Nothing changes. God's, God's our Savior, is our Lord. We ought to be excited about it. And we ought to, hey, listen. These kids here, they ought to see some excited people. I'm telling you, when, we, when people go on in, in, in the Christian walk and Christian life, listen to me now. A young person is full of, they're vibrant. They, want, they got a lot of life, right? I know I had a lot of life when I was young. And I wanted, I want, I want to do exciting things. And I thought of a lot of exciting things. I won't talk about that. But the thing is about this is that, hey, they, when we come to church, please don't come in with a long face. Maybe if you smile at somebody, maybe if you, you say, but I'm down in my life and I got this. And I said, hey, well, if you smile at somebody else and they smile back, maybe you'll get excited. It's exciting to, to, Think of that as a ministry. Kids go places and they see people smiling. I know it's all fake and they're jumping around and acting like they're, everything is wonderful and then you find out they committed suicide, okay? <laughs> Look at these actors and all this stuff. Man, I want to be like them. All that glory. And, and, and I want to dance around and, uh, naked like they do and all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's wonderful. No, they're miserable. And they won't tell you that. But folks, we don't have to look miserable if we're, you say, well, yeah, but I, my, I don't, I don't show, I don't show this on the outside. I'm, I'm a quiet person. I, I don't have much, emo, I'm not emotional. I see these same people at a basketball game. 
Hey, look at that. Look at that. Did you see what my son did? He, he made that shot. Wasn't it a good shot? Wasn't it? Oh, man. Hey, hey, hey. Look at, look at, look at, look at. Hey, hey. Or they go to a football game, screaming their heads off, but they're not emotional. You're not emotional about some things. And we're to tell ourselves, hey, take those promises in the Word of God and let the Holy Spirit do that and be like that tree that brings forth life and brings forth fruit to others. Amen. Hello, we're here for a reason. I'm here for a reason. I'm here to, God gave me the ability to torment you, so he left me here, okay? <laughs> All right? Ronald T. Petrick, Ronald Trouble Petrick, okay? So think about this. Listen, we've got a life to live. Good night. I have fun with everybody. The littlest kids that come to church and said, Preacher loves you, man. Good. And they come and hug me. This little girl that's going to go to Australia, that's her grandma and grandpa over there. She wrote me a note one day. She said, Thank you so much for all the love that you show me and, 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 uh, and all the hugs. <laughs> little kid. And I hug everybody. Okay? Somebody comes in with a long face. I just hug them and say, Man, good to see you. Love you. Why? I want to cheer them up. And I'm happy. Because I'm not worried about anything. When I went to Honduras, I wasn't worried about if I got killed or not. I said, well, what if somebody just beat you up? Well, I've been beat up before, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is about this, we've got a life to live. It's got an exciting life. Let's live it. Amen? Amen. I came to give you life abundantly. Yep. Amen? Amen? And folks, we can go through trials and struggles and all kinds of things by His power because He's the tree of life. Amen? Amen? And folks, don't forget, God didn't only call your pastor to serve Him. God called all of us and ordained all of us to do the work of God. Amen. And another thing, if you, you know what? I wish people would learn this in Christian churches. If you don't get your way, so what? Hello? Say, you're, you're, you're looking at this building. You know churches have died because they fought over a building? Do you know that? What kind of Christianity is that? My son's the pastor now. I'm just the old man, okay? No, what he decides, I don't agree with everything he does. I don't. He doesn't agree with everything I do either. So what? Amen? But he's the pastor. Pastor said it, let's do it. Say, but what if he got a wrong idea? Do you know what? Some pastors have made all kinds of mistakes, but God used the mistakes. Mm-hmm. How many hear about, you know, everybody talks about Dr. Hiles. You talking about Dr. Hiles? Hey, Dr. Hiles, when they're building a church, they bought a property downtown Hammond. And they got this building. And they said, and, and, and they had a meeting, said, well, how are we, how we going to get this? Dr. Hiles said, I'll take care of it. So they got the bulldozers said, tear the building down. It was the wrong building. They didn't buy that building. He tore down another building. <laughs> now, that could make a lot of churches split, right? But they didn't. They didn't. They made a deal. They, they bought the building that they weren't going to buy. And, and they bought another building, the building they, they were going to buy. I don't know how that all worked out. But they were doing fine. A mistake. Now, would you like to know that you, you, you uh, said, I'll take care of it, and you, you bought a house, and you tore somebody else's house down. <laughs> I don't know. I was a building. I was a big building. They tore it all down. But God blessed them because they worked it out. I just thought, thought I'd throw that in. No extra charge for that. But I'm talking about staying together, working together, praying together, you know, and, and so that your church prospers and you do the work of God and... Uh, we don't have to agree with everything. We don't have to agree to everything. Hello? There's some things that are not defined the way we think it is. And there's things that aren't, aren't, aren't spiritual things. The spiritual aspect is to working together and building together and love, loving each other and, and a family. Like I said, my wife and I have never had a disagreement. We're still together. <laughs> we agreed to stay together for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? We've had some bad days. Amen? We've, we've pared down in our old age. 
See, my son and his family lives in our house, and so we're kind of confined to one room right now. Now, if you're confined to one room, you've got to get along with each other. There's no place else to run. <laughs> Amen. So I just want to encourage you. Trees don't run. Trees don't run. Trees don't run. Build on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you enjoy him, hey, then your work will prosper. Not eternal things will get done. Things that really count. Don't worry about your bank account. Worry about what we're doing for eternity. Amen? Okay, I'm going to stop here. And uh, I just want to say, let, when you hear preaching, please, Every time you come to church, say, you know what? I want to, God's going to speak to me about something and make a decision. Amen? Amen? Pastor, I want you to come.